Hello guys, welcome back to GPU Tester. Today we're going to be comparing the RTX 4060 against the RX 6800 XT. You can see the specifications of each of the card on the screen right now, and I will also provide you with the specifications for the test bench. First game we have on this list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and we're playing at Extreme Preset at 1440p. In Call of Duty, 6800XT manages to give us more than 100 FPS on average compared to almost around 60 on the 4060. There are quite a few dips below 60 on the 4060 as you can see by the 1% and the 0.1% lows. On the other hand, the 6800XT gives flawless performance and there are no dips below 60. On the other hand, 6800XT performs much better Although the 0.1% lows at lower than 60, the 1% lows are not, and that's what matters more. Moving on to Counter Strike, we are playing at 1440p very high preset. In this game, both of these cards performed really well with the 4060 giving us over 160 FPS on average and the 6800 XT giving us over 350 FPS on average. This is an esports title though, so it's expected that both of these cards will perform really well. As you can see that in this area, the FPS gets slightly lower than on the other side of the map. Still, that doesn't affect the averages too much. Next on the list is Hogwarts Legacy and we're playing at high preset at 1440p. As you can see, the 4060 actually drops below 60 FPS on this title, whereas the 6800 XT manages to keep its FPS above 100 most of the time. I think below 60 is not as great as an experience as most people would expect from a card at this price range, so it's a bit of a disappointment. However, it's not really a card directed at people trying to game at 1440p, so maybe that can excuse it a bit. You get 93 FPS on average on the 6800 XT compared to 57 on the 4060. Next game on the list is Dying Light 2. We're playing at high preset at 1440p. And yet again, you can see that the 4060 does not maintain an average of 60 FPS or higher, whereas the 6800 XT manages to get more than 100 on average. Dying Light 2 is a single player title and not an esports title, which does mean FPS below 60 is also kind of acceptable, but that varies from person to person. Some people want 60 FPS all the time, while others are fine with even 30. On average, you get 54 on the 4060 and 104 on the 6800 XT. The same case carries on with Cyberpunk where you get less than 50 FPS on average on the 4060 and more than 80 FPS on the 6800 XT. Although there is the fact that you can enable DLSS in Cyberpunk which actually looks really good on the 4060 and that does mean you will be able to get more than 60 FPS if you use the balanced or even quality preset. Still though, 
at native resolution high preset it does not manage to get more than 47 fps on average you can also enable frame generation on the 40 series which actually gives impressive results God of War 2 is one more game where the 4060 struggles to maintain a 60 FPS average, where it drops down to almost 40s and mid 40s, as you can see on the 0.1% lows. The 6800 XT manages to get above 100 on average, with 1% lows ranging from, with 1% lows being generally above 90 FPS. Now we have Spider-Man Miles Morales running this at 1440p at very high preset. And as you had seen in the previous video, in, the, in these Spider-Man games, the 6800XT seems to underperform a little bit compared to the 4060. It generally has a bigger lead in other titles when compared to the 4060 but in spider-man the lead is not as big as you would expect maybe it's just the 4060 performing better or maybe it's the 6800 xt performing slightly lesser than it actually does in other titles you get a 92 fps average on the 4060 and 117 fps average on the 6800 xt hey yap saying there's a helicopter flying around like it's possessed Next, we have Uncharted 4. In this, the 4060 also drops from 60 FPS, dropping almost to the mid 50s at times. There is also the fact that the 6800 XT is using more than 9.5 GB of VRAM compared to the 8 GB on the 4060 which may be a cause for less performance on the 4060. On average you get 68 FPS on the 4060 and 116 FPS on the 6800 XT. Again, even though there are drops below 60 on the 4060, I think that does not matter much in single player titles. Next is Hitman 3, we're playing at Ultra Preset at 1440p. In this game, both these cards perform exceptionally with the 4060 giving you an average of 86 FPS compared to the 161 on the 6800 XT. I'm gonna be rich! Get the hell out of here! I got this that flyer they started handing out to the homeless really got me. Yeah. Next game we have is Red Dead Redemption 2. In this game, the 4060 again does not manage to keep a 60 FPS average, whereas the 6800 XT does. Although you have to keep in mind that a 6800 XT does cost slightly more than a 4060. There is also the fact that the 4060 comes with DLSS and DLSS frame generation. They work especially well if you are playing at 1440p or 4K.
Next game on the list is Watch Dogs Legion. Again, we are playing at 1440p at Ultra Preset. In Watch Dogs Legion, the 4060 drops from 30 FPS. Yes, you heard that right, 30 FPS as you can see from the 0.1% lose. Although that is very rarely, you can notice stutters while playing the game. The experience on the 4060 is not perfect, but it is acceptable still. 6800 XT gives great performance with an average of 97 FPS compared to the 49 FPS average on the 4060. Next and final game on this benchmark is Horizon Zero Dawn. We are playing at 1440p at the Ultra preset. In this game, both these cards perform really good actually. But that could be because of the fact that it is a pretty old game at this point. Still, I have to give credit where it is due. So the 4060 actually does decently here, managing to get an average FPS of 73. The 6800 XT gets an average FPS of 127. That is gonna bring an end to our video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Do let me know down below if you found anything interesting and if you have anything to add. And also comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.